Bible trails The Son of God, He is near He chose to walk with us These tribal trails Tribal trails In his second letter to Timothy, the Apostle Paul encouraged the young man and helped him to understand his role as the pastor of his congregation. He wrote, You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that you have heard from me among many witnesses. Commit these to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. You therefore must endure hardship as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No one engaged in warfare entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who enlisted him as a soldier. Our guest today shares his thought on this Bible passage. I was studying just uh, a few days ago about spiritual warfare, and, and I was encouraged reading Paul's letter to Timothy there that when you come into the life of Christ, you're, you're automatically enlisted, not only into a life of blessing and, and, and fulfillment, but also you're also automatically enlisted into a, an, an, a warfare immediately against the, the works of darkness, against the kingdom of darkness. On the one hand, you're, you're uh, helping yourself to grow in your new Christian life, but on the other hand, you're actually uh, putting your arm around other people to help them as well. Everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can anyone preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Good day. Uh, we're here uh, at the studio visiting with uh, Richard Frilmont from uh, Yorkton, Saskatchewan. It's good to have you with us today. Good to be here, Conrad. So, you're a pastor? Yes, I pastor Grace River Mission Church in Yorkton, Saskatchewan. What's your passion? Uh, our passion is to uh, re uh, reach and meet the people on the street level. Yorkton is a, a city that has a lot of uh, church uh, growth and uh, the church is established in Yorkton and uh, each church meets and uh, reaches people on their level and, and this and that but I thought that meeting people on the street level would be very important and the Lord opened up a glorious opportunity to meet people right on the street level so uh, every level of and category of people are being reached in Yorkton now so all the churches I believe have combined to uh, uh, do their part for the gospel in the city of Yorkton. There are people all around me who are burdened with sin. Help me to remember just where I might have been. If it wasn't Our church is right basically down the street from the pub and I've met a lot of the shop owners and I've uh, you know on a good basis with them and good friends with them so 
I figured it was a good opportunity to reach the gospel for, of Jesus in Yorkton in that capacity. We've always had an open door policy to anybody, whether it be a, a person de dealing with the drug habit or the booze habit or someone with other addictions and other struggles in their life. And I remember years ago, I had a, a close cousin of mine who passed away. He lived on the streets of Calgary, Edmonton, Vancouver, and he kind of had a very rough life and he'd been attacked with different weapons and, and he came through some very horrific experiences. And he told me one time words that really stuck with me. He said, Rick, at the Grace River Mission, always have an open door policy because the last thing a, a person on the street wants to see is another closed door. And that stuck with me, Conrad. So I always endeavored to have the doors open to the Grace River Mission. And we've had people come in who were, obviously were intoxicated, obviously were under the influence of drugs, but we made them feel welcome. And we've never really had any uh, major incidents because people coming in, the odd thing once in a while, but nothing major. And we're still able to connect with these people and help them in some way. The God of Israel said, here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen one in whom I delight. I will put my spirit on him and he will bring justice to the nations. He will not shout or cry out or raise his voice in the streets. A bruised reed he will not break and a smoldering wick he will not snuff out. Upon this one prayer meeting, I was looking out the front window of the mission and across the street, directly across the street was the pub and one guy was uh, leaning there up against the wall, obviously three sheets to the wind, and he was obviously intoxicated. So I thought to myself, Lord, after the prayer meeting, I'm going to go and talk to this person. So after the meeting was over, I walked across the street, and I leaned up against the wall with this guy, you know, sat with him there on the sidewalk. He was kind of drunk and intoxicated, but I didn't mind. I wanted to meet this guy, maybe make a new friend. And uh, he was... a uh, a man from Manitoba, I remember talking to him. And he told me, Rick, you know, I, I grew up in the church and uh, I was a, a, an attendant in the church and I helped the, the pastors and the preacher do their ministry as a kid. And uh, just by the beauty of the building and just by the atmosphere, I knew God was good and I knew God was big and real. But later on in life, I started to to run around with booze and drugs and girls and all that, and it took me away from that. And he said, you know, Rick, you're the first person that has talked to me in months like I actually mattered or that someone actually cared for me. And, uh, and it, it, I didn't care whether people thought him and I were both drunk sitting there on the sidewalk in front of the pub. I didn't care, but I was just opening my heart and, and letting this... this uh, this person who was broken into my life and endeavoring to minister and to pray for him too. So do you uh, go out for coffee much? Yes, uh, uh, you mentioned coffee. I, there's a place in Yorkton I go to the bus depot and uh, I'm finding that at, at the start, I was just going there to have coffee in the morning just to get, to get into the day and just start my day off. And lo and behold, I began to meet people and they'd come to me and some of the waitresses there have even asked for different things like prayer requests or uh, do you know so-and-so, keep them in your prayers. And I've met some people there and have got to be really good friends with them over the months that I've been going there. And it's actually uh, opened up to more ministry opportunity even in the bus depot. So it holds true that wherever you go, you carry the gospel with you and you let your light shine and people just gravitate to you because they see that there's a person with the genuine love of God, something that perhaps they've been missing in their life and needing to see. My next door neighbor or someone across the sea who needs to know the Savior misery help my heart make me willing to reach out today to lost souls who are dying let me 
So maybe you could tell us about your ancestry. Well, I'm a, I'm a Métis person. On the one side is Cree, and on the other side is uh, French. I was born in Belcaris, Saskatchewan, and uh, the, my earliest recollection years, uh, I grew up in the, in the Yorkton area on the Crescent Lake Colony. That's just a few miles to the uh, south of Yorkton and right next door to a small reserved reserve called uh, Little Bone Reserve. And uh, I can recall uh, having the, the log house with uh, the, the newspaper on the wall for wallpaper and the big kerosene lamp sitting on the table for light. I have some recollection of those memories. And uh, then we moved into Yorkton where I began going to school, continued to go to school there. And uh, uh, I remember one of the first uh, kind of experiences with, with the Lord in my life is I always wanted to be a, a, a priest or, or one who would uh, be in the church. I, I, I would go to church and I would see the, the minister doing his ministry. And so as a young kid, I would, uh, I would take a, a pillowcase and I would wear the, a robe around my shoulder, tie it around me. And I would put little cups on the window sills and I would, I would take a little a Gideon New Testament that I got from the school and I would open it up and I would uh, kind of see myself doing the ministry there. So it was a, kind of a story that goes back a long ways. But then over a few years as school went on, uh, living in Yorkton, I guess that's where I kind of uh, got into the, the wrong friends and then things started to deteriorate from there. But uh, over the years, that's where I know the Lord had his hand on me. I can remember on this one occasion where I was driving around on some country roads with some friends of mine and we were obviously drinking and, and uh, the driver had been drinking as well, very intoxicated. And he drove into a slough where the car was almost totally submerged with water. And uh, that would have been one of the places where I know God had his hand on not only myself, but all of the others riding in that vehicle because no way nobody got seriously hurt or, or, or drowned or anything like that. So that was one of the, the examples of thinking back now how God had his hand on me to spare my life. And there was a time or two, one time I can, uh, I was told that I, I overdosed on some medications that, that we'd taken at a, at a party or something and, and uh, my tongue swole up and, and, and it was very hard to breathe. And of course, I, I didn't really remember anything, mm -hmm. but there again, the Lord spared my life from uh, you know, dying from uh, overdose of drugs and choking to death or whatever may have very well happened. The Lord had his hand on me there too, and I'm thankful that he spared my life. I believe some of you could identify with today's guest. Once you were involved in a serious accident, but you came out of it without any injury. You might have even thought you were lucky. However, that's not what the Bible says. In Psalm 90, Moses shared his personal experience that our lives are in the hand of the eternal God. And because of sin, we experience his judgment. Moses said, you turn man to destruction and say, 
Return, O children of men, for a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past, and like a watch in a night. You carry them away like a flood. They are like a sleep. We have no control over how long we live. You might ask, how come I survived the accident? According to the Bible, your life today is a gift of God. In his warning of God's coming judgment, the apostle Peter said, the Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long suffering towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God is waiting for you to return to him through his son, Jesus Christ. He wants you to live for him. So don't delay your decision. If you need help, give us a call. Ricky met his wife, Lucy, in the early 1980s. Years ago, how the, they'd have little dance uh, concerts or something where all the kids would gather. And back then they called them saw cops where the, the guy would play records, there was 45s and uh, LPs, and they'd play music, and, and my wife Lucy was there, and she's my wife now, but we were just young, and, and we just met there. And uh, over, the, over the years, um, like, I, I'd moved away from Yorkton and wasn't with her, and uh, living the life of crime and alcohol and drug addiction, of course, the long arm of the law reaches you and you end up, in most instances, doing time in jail. And I was uh, sentenced to a lengthy portion of time in the Regina Correctional Center. And upon my release, I met Lucy again at the bus depot. I came in from Regina to Yorkton. And so we ran off together just to have some fun. And. Uh, an old Volkswagen rabbit pulls up on the street there. And uh, I thought, well, this guy's just going to ask for directions. We'll just tell him where to go and all this and just to get rid of him. But he walks up to us and he says, did you know that Jesus loves you? And he gave us some gospel material. And then uh, uh, after that, a week or two after that, that was when my wife's sister invited us to a tent meeting. She had been born again a couple of weeks prior. And she told us that there's a, they're having meetings in Yorkton and the big tent at the fairgrounds. So she said, you have to come and see and witness this. It's wonderful. So me and my wife went. And of course, we were kind of under the weather and hung over and broke and very distraught spiritually, just kind of really having problems. So we went. We followed her and we went into the tent and we thought, well, We'll go into this tent and we'll see what the Christian people do, the church people do, and it might be quite interesting and maybe funny even. So we were sitting there in the service, and the minister who was ministering the word, he brought Jesus to me like he was uh, an actual person who walked the same road that I did. Who, who suffered rejection and hurt and pain, and he understood, he connected with me. The minister made God very relevant to me. Before, he was always the God that was so far off that he would never hear my prayer when I called on him. But this minister made Jesus sound to me like he identified with me in my pain and my suffering, and he met me where I was at. And then uh, they called the people to come forward for prayer and ministry. And so Lucy was sitting beside me. I thought, woman, if you're going to sit here, you can sit. I'm going up there. I don't know what's happening, but I feel the need to go up and to uh, at least speak to this minister. So I went up there, and I, for all I knew, the best how to, to pray, I began to pray with my eyes closed. And I opened my eye like this, and I looked over, and here my wife Lucy was with me beside me, and we gave our heart to the Lord Jesus Christ together that night in that camp meeting in Yorkton. And that's how we initially came to know Jesus Christ. And shortly after that, we uh, were, were baptized. And uh, th the way they baptized was one person would, would be baptized at a time. But her and I, because we were such small stature, 
they baptized both side by side in one tank and we fit perfectly. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> King David said, My sacrifice, O God, is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart you, God, will not despise. I have come here broken down. I have fallen. My knees are on the ground. I We started attending the Free Pentecostal Church in Yorkton, Saskatchewan, where Pastor Russell Richardson was pastoring. So we appreciated the, the help and support and the grounding that he gave us, even attending through his Bible school there in Yorkton. Basically, it was just one class, but uh, uh, Pastor Richardson would teach either in the mornings or the afternoons, and Sister Rich and Richardson would take the uh, other half of the day. And during the lunch times, they would have a kitchen facility there for us and the students. They can either stay for lunch or go home for lunch. And it was a tremendous experience for us. And they'd have different ministers and teachers coming in from time to time. And Lucy and I attended the Bible school for about five years or so. And I was very thankful for the grounding in the Word of God that we got. And uh, how that uh, the foundation of the gospel was put under us in such a way that that uh, we knew that God was real. We knew that he was not only the answer to help us in our lives, but he was the answer for everyone else out there. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love endures forever. I will give you thanks, for you answered me. You have become my salvation. When Lucy and I got saved together, we grew together in our Christian life. We experienced new things like Lucy would just be walking down the street with, with me one day and then she'd say, Rick, look at the trees, look at the grass, look at the beauty of the creation. Things we've never experienced or really, we, we just never noticed before. And together, those things would just be, you know, tremendous discoveries and we would just enjoy them together so much. So we, we encouraged each other over the years to uh, in the Word of God and in prayer. And we learned about the power of the Word of God together. We learned about the power of prayer together. We learned about the power of community and Christian uh, groups together. So I'm thankful that God not only saved me, but he saved my wife Lucy at the very same time, in the very same day. And uh, we have uh, six children, four daughters. I've had four daughters and two sons. And uh, my four daughters are, are pretty much helping in the ministry at the Grace River Mission. They help uh, the, with, with the singing. 
and my two sons are uh, going to school in Yorkton and they were helping at the ministry too, uh, drumming in the music. So uh, how long have you been uh, pastoring? I've been pastoring, uh, the Grace River Mission would be about 11 or 12 years and before that I have had different outreach opportunities through Yorkton in different school settings and training centers to be uh, uh, help to the students and staff there in the school setting. Brother Hooper, who passed away a few years ago, I was blessed and honored to work with him in the Fort Capel, the Full Gospel Indian Bible School there in uh, Beseta Village. I served as uh, a teacher there for many years, and then uh, uh, they asked me to sit on the board of directors there for a few years, and, and I also uh, did a few years as the president of the school there for a few years before I uh, kind of uh, stepped down from that because of uh, health issues with my wife and, and with my mother. I've been a born-again Christian for close to 30 years now, and it's been quite a journey, and the Lord has really uh, brought me to some wonderful things in life. So I'm thankful that God brought us together for a purpose, and now we can see that purpose and plan unfolding mm -hmm. in our lives. In the Lord Jesus Christ, God has purpose and a plan in store for you. In Jeremiah 29, verse 11, you'll see what kind of a plan that he has in his mind. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Wow! The Lord always has our best interest in mind. For that, we should be thankful, and for that, we should trust him 100%. If you have any questions about what God has planned for you, feel free to call us. Let's get back with a grateful heart. Get back to the Holy One. Get back for He has given Jesus Christ his son, let's give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks for He has given Jesus Christ for us. God.